Warning. This podcast may contain spoilers for whatever TV show or movie is mentioned. Please listen at your own discretion. Welcome to Viewers Anonymous. What's going on? I am Scooch Bronson. And I am S. Foster. Yes, sir. And you are listening to the Viewers Anonymous podcast. What's going on, bro? Oh, man, I can't call it, man. Just uh, excited about this episode, man. I, I had also pushed out one yesterday. Um, you know, a little mm-hmm. 28 minutes or less, a little something. I just tossed in there real quick. And dude, it was so wild. We were just talking before we started recording. And I was like, you was telling me it was a pretty good episode. Now I appreciate that. But I was like, I fucked up one time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's so crazy why I messed yeah. up that. And you didn't catch it. So towards the end of the podcast, uh, and what I'm talking about, I did O, which uh is really a triple entendre, because like the title is it's entitled mm-hmm. O, but it's for Othello. And also my dude name in the movie was Odin. So the the, the name mm-hmm. is O, Odin, and Othello. So I did that movie, mm-hmm. 2001 film. And so once I got to the end, and I was talking about how it had a $5 million budget. And they, yeah. I think they made, I think overall they made like five, well, opening week they made like $5 million or something like that. But the movie only grossed like 13 And I think worldwide it grossed like $16 million. And my dumb ass, Ooh. my dumb ass said, yeah. You said, said 19. Five, I said $5 to make it. <laughs> and I said, oh, oh. You know what I thought you said? Oh, I thought man. you said it took them 5000 to make <laughs> Dude, I said $5. <laughs> oh, okay. Because hey. look, even even then, I was I was sitting there like, damn, $5,000? That's a pretty good ass movie. $5,000. Hey. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. <laughs> Hey, I fuck that shit up, man. And that's the thing, like, yo, when, when you when you doing that that much stuff, and especially by yourself, like for me to only fuck up one time, really, I think it's good. Mm-hmm. But like, I meant to say five million, and I said five dollars. Like the movie, it really didn't make it really didn't make a lot. Like they didn't gross a lot for that film. But at the same time. Yeah. Like that's why I think it was one of those diamond in the rough type of movies because they didn't have a huge budget for it. They didn't make a lot for it, but it's like one of those underdog films where it's like, yeah, it didn't get that much prop. A lot of it, obviously, a lot of people didn't gravitate to it, but I felt that the story mm-hmm. was so good, and for it to be a William Shakespeare screenplay, like. Because I'm not a huge William Shakespeare yeah. person. You know what I'm saying? But right. I think that this story, though, and the way that they played it out, it made it more modern with the basketball and the private school and all that type mm-hmm. of shit. I just felt like, man, because this is the thing. It's like, if you really think about it, like, this dude did all of this shit because he was jealous. Like, this is crazy. You're going to ruin, ruin somebody's life because you're jealous of them. And then in the process, you get yourself like and ruin his life too. Yeah, yeah you get locked up like because you because you jealous of a motherfucker. Crazy dude, crazy, crazy. But um, but anyway, I appreciate you listening to the episode. But it was just so crazy that oh, my sure, dumb man. ass said five dollars to make, the film. and I meant to say five <laughs> million dollars. But you know, it's one of those That's things, hilarious. man. It happens. It happens when you when you when especially when you're doing stuff solo and you're not really. Not really looking at notes, but see, and that's another reason why I don't like looking at notes, because I had like the the IMDb in front of me, and that's why I got the mm-hmm. five million dollars, and I'm just looking at it so quick, and I just say five dollars, you know. And then yeah. Like, I had listened back to that <laughs> shit. I was like, damn. I said, <laughs> I said, my dumb ass said five dollars, but yeah, man, it's that. That's I feel like that's a great film. So uh, I I ain't mean to do too much promotion on that but 
I just thought that shit was funny that I fucked up and said five dollars. Nah, nah, yeah, you supposed you supposed to promote, man. You supposed to promote, man. But it was it was uh, it's, you know, what I'm saying you got to promote it, man. It's it's one of them episodes people got to listen to. Um, you know, for for a movie like that to be as good as it was, and then like you find out that it didn't get the the success that it had or the success that it should have had. That's that's very surprising, man. Like I I I remember watching it like. Yeah, I didn't watch it the year it came out, but I probably watched it because I think I was like 12 when it came out. Nah, I might have been a little bit older than that. Now, if you think about it, yeah, that's about right. No, dude, I was, it's 2001. I was, I was a sophomore in high school. Yeah, I was 11 when it came out. Or I was about to be 12 when it came out. But uh, I probably watched it like maybe a year later. Or maybe then, or maybe in 2012 instead of 2000. I mean, 2002 instead of 2001. But I remember it was a good movie. Like, like you said, the cast was fire. Um, the story, you know, what I'm saying I, I remember telling you uh, when I was in high school, we had to read Othello. That was one of the uh, that was one of the first books our um, English teacher made us read, and. Uh, I was super, super into it after I found out that Othello was an African king. I didn't know he was black in the in the story. So once I found that out, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm into this. I, I definitely want to see what goes on. But, uh, you know, didn't go too good. So that's cool, too. But, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? Me, personally, uh, I, I ain't been doing nothing, man. This past weekend, um, I, I was, you know, watching some football. I've been on uh, Xbox since Friday, because Black Ops um, Cold War came out. So I've been doing that, playing some zombies and stuff like that, you know, just trying to get back into my gaming mode. And, and then uh, these last couple of days, including the day, man, i just been asleep. I was knocked out yesterday. I just went to bed like an old man uh, yesterday because of work. <laughs> and uh, got some much-needed rest, man. I went to sleep at 5 o'clock, bro. I get off oh. at 3.30. I went to sleep at 5 o'clock. I ain't get up until... I didn't get up up until this morning for work, and I get up at like five, six o'clock. So, yeah, I was. It was one of the mild day joints. Oh yeah, but you might as well say you lost the day there, man. <laughs> oh man, did I lose a day? Boy, I lost all all the whole day, man. And then it don't make it no better, man. It's starting to, you know, we getting that we in that fall weather in Ohio, so. It's about to start getting super cold. That rain and, and that, you know what I'm saying, that sleep about to start hitting. And, you know what I'm saying? Eventually it's going to turn into snow. And we'll just talk about that, you know what I'm saying, before we start recording. And I'm dreading it, man. I think we're going to get a lot of snow this year. So <sighs> I got to, you know what I'm saying, stock up. I got to go get me some new work boots and all that kind of stuff, man. It's going to be a, it's gonna be a cold one this year. Oh, uh, man. I, I I had a feeling that it was gonna get cold down here. Well, for South Carolina standards, but it's been cool the last couple of days. But what the crazy part is, two weeks ago, dude, it was in the seventies, seventy five, like crazy. And then like this week, man, you ain't got to brag, brother. You don't. Nah, brag, dude. <laughs> no, <laughs> dude, it's so wild, man. Because it's like now, yeah, because like. I would wake up, and it'd be 60 already. It's like, damn, that's crazy. Man. This week, man, it's, it's been in the 40s, um, so it's starting to get cool, man. Um, I mean, I haven't got to the point where I'm wearing long sleeves yet. Like, I mean, I wear a hoodie, you know, but I have a short sleeve shirt up under. I ain't yeah. got to the point where I had to pull out the long sleeves yet, but but it's getting there, man. It's getting there. What? Man, What's I had the also, coldest you get in South Carolina? Like, it really depends. Like, sometimes... We have those mornings where sometimes it gets down to about 25. Um, it hasn't oh, okay, happened okay, in a while. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it'll get down there. Like, you know, the, the one thing that sucks about down here is we get more ice than snow. And see, that's yeah, the, so that's right the by ocean, so. Yeah, yeah, so like that be the that be the worst part, man. Like when we have like that ice outside, that black ice. Cause it got me one time. Mm-hmm. It got me um shit, back in like back in like 2011, 2012. Man, Ooh. I was like, man, I was like, man, let me get to work. 
And I should have waited. I should have waited till it was light out. But I was like, man, I need to get to work. And I fucking mm-hmm. leave. And I had a I had four wheel drive, but I didn't know at the time that you could turn your yeah. four wheel drive on while you drive. And I thought you had to be stopped. So I'm oh. like, man, so I'm waiting. I'm waiting for a light. I was like, man, I need to, I need to uh, get stopped. You know, this is how crazy. Like, I'm sitting here, like, wanting to get stopped by red light so I could turn my four wheel drive on, not knowing that you could turn mm-hmm. it on while you're going. So I'm mm-hmm. like, man, I need to get stopped. And so, man, I'm going over the bridge. Man, started hydroplaning. Went to the left, went to the right, then it went back, mm. and then it hit the curb and then flipped over on the side. I was like, damn. Mm. It got me one morning, man. And that so trash, so trash, man. Ended up ended up still going to work. Oh, I know it, man. It, man, listen, we when we get black ice, it'll be a whole a whole street full of it. So I know what you mean. You mess around a hydroplane down the whole street. Hey, but that shit, that shit is not fun. But when you lose control of your car, there's nothing mm-hmm. you can do. Mm-hmm. All, all you can do is hope for the best. Yeah, man. You the, the for anybody who uh who don't know how to drive in the snow, the best thing I can tell you is to not munch on the brakes. Don't munch on the brakes. Slowly tap the brake and try to straighten your wheel out as much as possible. And then if you're swerving, turn your wheel the opposite way. Of whatever way you swerve, but trust me, it work and it get you out of that out of that little gym. Oh yeah, I was trying, I was trying, but I think I think I was going just a little too fast. <laughs> I was going, I was going probably about 40, 45. and it, it, I, yeah. and see what the reason I hydroplane because I was on a bridge, and you know when you're on that bridge, there ain't nothing up that's under the them. Worst. Yeah, that's, that bridge, that's what got me. It always ice up. Yeah, yeah, they always ice up. Yeah. Yes, sir, man. Got me. Got they, me. We got we got signs. We got year-round signs uh, uh, down here, up here in Dayton. Like, it'll tell you, like, depending on the year, I mean, depending on the time of the year, like, it could be in fall. Oh, that motherfucker got ice up on you in the fall, too. That's how cold it be getting, man. So, yeah, got to be careful, man. Um, We doing one of your favorite movies today, though, bro. Yeah, we yeah, we are doing a we, super super duper uh, favorite of yours. Yeah, this is one of my favorite. Remember, before we get into it though, man, for the people, I, I seen it was the most viewed thing mm-hmm. that we had on the, uh, the VA Watch uh, podcast Watch Group page. Man, I had put up a picture uh, when I was up in Ohio with you, uh, with you and Gan. I mean, only reason yeah, I cut yeah. Gan out is because he just ain't a part of this podcast, but. Um, but I posted right, that man because right. I, I seen because you you had posted uh, a memory on Facebook where uh, we had did yeah. the first part. Now what? Now this is what I don't remember. I don't remember if I was on already home first. No, I wasn't already home first, and then you had did the story. No, time. this is. Yeah, I say this was. So you, we had we have been on each other's podcast a couple of times before that actual time, but this was a time where you was actually in Dayton, and and you had hit me up and told me you was here and was like, "What's up?" And I'm like, "Well, shit, if you're gonna be here during the Sunday, then you know what I'm saying come through and record." You was like, "Shit, all right, cool, just let me know." So then we made everything happen, man, and you know what I'm saying we got we got a chance to actually meet each other. You know what I'm saying? We got a chance to actually do a pod together in person. And then I think that following week is when um I did stolen time with you. Oh, oh okay. Cause I cause uh I was looking at the memory and it was actually episode 27. And I was like, so that means you probably mm-hmm. been started rocking with me around 20. Cause I th- I thought it was like 30, but you was on 27. So um I think I think it was. Think probably probably around like 20, 25 around that time. Okay. Yeah. That's when I actually started listening. And then because I know what we, we met through what, Instagram, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, yeah it, was it was through Instagram because it was um I was posting um I was posting stuff about already home, you was posting about stolen time, 
and then we had linked up and then we was listening to each other's stuff and then you uh you was um I think you at that time you was just on SoundCloud. Yeah. And uh yep, and then I remember I used to be in the middle of work sneaking my phone out and on SoundCloud you can comment on actual timestamp, like they would have a timestamp you commented on. So I would be commenting on the podcast like when y'all be talking about certain stuff. And I was like, man, like this shit is fire, bro. I gotta keep this in the rotation. And then um man, after that, bro, it just it was just one of them things that we were just linking back and forth. Yeah, but it's crazy to think the reason I had posted it because it was like it's crazy to think like it's been three years. It's like yep. we have like we have been like not constantly working with each other, but we always, you know, we, we would find a time we'd do a couple of episodes, then you know, I'd jump on that. He would jump on this, mm-hmm. and it just, you know, became what it is now. You know what I'm saying? Well, we got this podcast that we do twice a week. So yep. it's just, it's been wild, man. It's crazy how time flies. Time flies. But uh, That's a fact, I just want to, I mean, I just it, want to it, just, it just goes to show you, man, that, you know, when you when you really rocking with people, man, like just the, the things that y'all can do together when y'all both got that, you know what I'm saying, that same love and that same energy. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. But man, yeah, man, this is one of my favorite films. Um, it's it, it really got almost everything that I am looking for. Like, I love suspense. I love true stories. I love time pieces. Um, like it has like everything. Mystery, thriller, crime. It got everything that I'm looking for in the film. And so we're gonna go ahead and get it out. The um. The film we're doing today is the Zodiac, um, the 2007 version. Not there. There is a 2005 version. Same name, Zodiac. So we're talking about the one that came out 2007, starring um, Jake Gyllenhaal, Mark Ruffalo, Robert Downey Jr. And like basically, you know, I'm gonna give it to you in a nutshell, and then we're just gonna discuss everything as far as what happened in the oh, film. Real quick. Real quick, you missing somebody. You missing your boy, man, John Carroll Lynch. John Carroll Lynch. Yeah, he in this movie. Oh, too. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We just talked about him last week. Yeah. Now listen, I'm gonna tell you what's funny. I didn't, I, I didn't put a face to a name when you were telling me about it, but I remember him from um, Joe Dirt. Oh, he was when, in Joe Dirt. Uh, when he was when he was in the hole. When Joe Dirt was in the hole, he was the dude that was dressed up as the dude that was supposed to be from uh I forgot what the movie is, but everybody do the joke about it. It puts the lotion on the skin. And he kept uh he kept messing with he had Joe Dirt in the hole trying to do that, <laughs> imitate that. And that's <laughs> the funniest fuck. But that's where I remember him from. The dude is hilarious, man. Dude, it's like every time I see him, it's so crazy. He he's always Arthur Lee Allen to me, man. <laughs> like it don't matter what I see him in. Yeah, he's Arthur Lee Allen to me now. He's the fucking Zodiac killer. But um, but like mm-hmm. this movie, man. Like there's so much. There's so much to go along with it. And like I said, it's based on true stories back in the '60s and '70s. There was this killer who would um kill people. Basically, mostly females. He, he was more attracted to uh, the females than like he would, because there yeah. was three incidents where he killed a boy and a girl to get. Well, let me rephrase that. He killed the girl all three times, but three three of those times he didn't finish off the dudes. But um, it started Ooh. out um, showing this girl. Darlene, she goes and pick up um, this uh, this boy uh, that she liked or whatever, and they ended up going to uh, you know one of those sites where you would probably take somebody you know to go you know bang somebody in public or whatnot. And dude, make out up mountain. On, yeah, make out mountain, yeah. And so he goes, <laughs> uh, they go there, and he comes up. It, it was crazy how that scene went down because my man pulled up, stopped. And just sat there. And then my dude, like, mm-hmm. yo, then he pulls off, dude, like, yo, that's your husband? <coughs> like, nah. But she was looking like she knew who he was. So then he pulls off, then he comes yeah. back, shoot them motherfuckers, and then switch guns, then come back, shoot them again. So 
what made his story unique to Zodiac, I mean, is like after he did that, he sent a letter to mm-hmm. the news to the to the press. You know, the San Francisco Chronicle was yeah. one of the places he sent it to. Because this movie is based more on the San Francisco Chronicle, mainly because one of the dudes, the main character, Robert Graysmith, he's actually the person that wrote the screenplay for this movie because it's based off the book that he did. Right. And so mm-hmm. that's why it's more focused on the San Francisco Chronicle. So he signed in this letter basically saying that he was the one who killed them and said that he killed somebody a year before, all this type of stuff. So then it takes you to he was just he kept sending in these notes and like he was just sporadically killed. Like there was only one killing that was sporadic, and that was when the one he did on Washington the Cherry to the cab driver, which that one just came out of nowhere. It didn't make sense. And he leaned he leaned up and because he didn't rob the cab driver. So it was just it was just one that didn't make sense because it didn't involve a female. And right. So then it basically goes um, on to where they wanted to get, they wanted to speak with him. And because they, they, they set up this thing where uh, it was this TV host guy. And this TV host mm-hmm. guy hosted this thing, said they only want the Zodiac to call in. And then come to find out, it only ended up being this dude in the mental facility. So that didn't really help. All that really did was uh, it, what it did do. It created like the funniest part of the movie. I don't know if you caught that. Mm-hmm. So during that scene, so the guy called in and it said that he um he has headaches. He was like, I have headaches. Yeah. He said. <laughs> he said. He said. <laughs> This is so fucking funny. This dude said, I have headaches. He said, so he said, I kill. He said, if I don't kill, I get headaches. If I kill, I don't get headaches. And then the shorty dude said, yeah. that's fucked up. And I was like, yo, that shit was so funny to me. I don't know why it was so funny to me, but it was just so fucking funny. Yeah. Because the way he said it, he was like, yo, that is fucked up. And then, like, he did the scream. <laughs> and then he's like, they said, what was that? Tell me, that's my headache. I'm like, come on, man, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that shit was so funny. And then, um, but anyway, like, in a nutshell, man, like, because, like, it's so hard to really break down this film. I think that really all we could do is just really take parts of it because, there's so yeah. much to cover. There's so much factual information that are out there. And then, like I like I said before, I've listened to a podcast, um, the Monster Podcast on the Zodiac. Um, I've seen two or three different documentaries on the Zodiac. Like I thought that the Zodiac was a very interesting character because what we found out throughout the movie was, I think that what it is, is that they ended up being copycats. I don't think that there was just one person mm-hmm. that was killing people because what we soon to find out was he started taking credit for things that he did not do. And I think that what people mm-hmm. was doing in the California area was they're like, well, the Zodiac is out here killing people and he still hasn't been caught. So I think that people started yeah, just well, they have an opportunity to kill somebody, and then the Zodiac would just take the cup. Dude, I, I, I'm telling you, I swear, there, there's probably a good bit of people going around in the 70s that then live full lives fucking killing somebody in the 70s and just mm-hmm. fucking good in the 90s and not even worried about the police walking them down. So I, I that's, that was my impression of what ended up happening, especially when you found out that he was taking credit for things that he did not do. Mm-hmm. Well, to me, you know, like, especially on that point, it kind of makes you even wonder, like, did he ever kill somebody in the first place? You know what I mean? Maybe that, you know, maybe it was a couple coincidental situations, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know what I'm saying? Maybe he was, um, 
cause cause what was funny to me was the you know what I'm saying the relationship between the reporters and the and the police, and it was like they was working like hand in hand with everything. But to me, I was kind of thinking like, well, what if this motherfucker was like a reporter himself? You know what I'm saying? And like he would just get tipped off about a murder, or he finds out about a murder, and then him being a reporter, he could find out all the information and then just create this whole Zodiac persona. Well, I mean, people, there was a time where people were saying that maybe it was Paul Avery um, played by Robert Downey Jr. because that was like, it makes sense because he was the one that was writing about a lot of the stuff. I think Mm -hmm. I hear your theory, but the one reason I would say that I think that this is the interesting thing about the person that was the prime suspect in this movie that was played by John Carroll Lynch was Arthur Lee Allen. The thing with Arthur Lee Allen was, and like one of one of my favorite scenes in this movie, on a serious note, was when <clears throat> when Dave Toski and, and Robert Graysmith was talking in that restaurant towards the end of the movie, and they was putting together mm-hmm. this stuff. And see, Darlene Theron was the um was the girl that got killed at the beginning of the movie. And remember she looked that, at that was Carl. the first murder. Yeah, because this is the thing. When they when they pulled up on that burger joint, because she said before mm-hmm. they got there how hungry she was. So when she yeah. got there, she changed her mind and said, hey, let's go somewhere quiet. The reason she wanted to go somewhere quiet was because she saw that car. So she knew Arthur Lee Allen was there. So she left. But Arthur Ooh. ended up following them. So Darlene and Mike is sitting there getting ready to make out and then he came and killed them or whatever. The reason I point right. out Dar- Darlene is because during that scene towards the end of the movie, Darlene worked at the International House of Pancakes and Arthur lived like 50 feet in his mom's basement from that place. Ooh. Also, he pointed out you remember when uh, Robert Graysmith went to go see her friend that was in jail and she was like, yeah. Darlene used to have these painting parties and she was like, it used to be this one dude that used to come and used to bring her uh, presents from Tier 1 or whatever and she said that she was scared mm-hmm. of the dude because he killed somebody before and then he was like, this is when Graysmith switched his focus because he thought it was a guy named uh, Rick Marshall so she was like, he had something mm-hmm. short. And he was like, was his name Rick? And he was, she was like, no, it's not Rick. And he was like, it was it was Rick Marshall. And she was like, no, it was not Rick Marshall. So he got pissed off. And he getting ready to leave. And she was like, it was Lee. So then he also takes you back to a point where when he was sitting at the, um, what do you call those people? Handwriting expert guy. When, when mm-hmm. he was sitting, when, when he was sitting at his house, waiting on him to come back because he was just sitting there talking to uh, the cleaning lady. And the cleaning lady was like, yeah, yeah, I talked to the Zodiac. He called and said, oh, today's my birthday, so I have to kill. And so he looked up Arthur Lee Allen. He got his um, his license and seen that he was born on that day. And, and um, yeah. so she said that it was Lee. So that ties everything up to where, yo, Arthur Lee Allen knew uh, Darlene. He called but her house. And, and he was uh he was they said something about him being ambidextrous or something, didn't they? Yeah. And he said, dude, that the that scene when they interrogated him when he was at work. Well, first off, let mm-hmm. me know. First off, let me know. That was so fucked up when when the boss man brought him in there. They could have waited till the boss man left. They was like, yo, we investigating the Zodiac murders. And that boss fucking yeah. looked at his ass like, like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> I work with this dude. So, yeah, like, what fuck like, what, what's going on? Like, yeah, like, y'all could have waited till he walked out, man, to put all the information out there. But, like, so Arthur, like, he comes in and, like, he just starts, you know, when there's a situation where, 
you about to ask somebody something and they say the shit before you even say anything. Like he was mm-hmm. doing a lot of that during the interroga- interrogation. Yeah, like he was. He was saying that he was saying that um oh what did he say? He he was telling them it, that he had got home. He was like, I forgot to tell the officer that um when I when I got home that day, because they asked him about a day. And he was like, yeah, I, I, I told the other officer that when I got home, my neighbor saw me. He was like, I forgot to tell that officer that. And he was like, he's like, what time did you get home? He was like, oh, around about four or five o'clock. And then he was like, he died like two weeks later. <laughs> it's just like, so what the fuck you tell him? And then, and then he was like, um, oh, and those knives that they seen you with, that, cause that's because I killed the deer earlier that day. It's like, mm-hmm. what the fuck? Oh, they weren't even gonna ask him about a fucking knife. He just said, "Oh, oh." He said, "I killed a chicken for dinner." That's what he said. He said, "I killed a chicken for dinner." That's why I had yeah. bloody knives. And then he just throws out there, "Oh yeah, I know what this is about. This is about the most dangerous game." That's like, like motherfucker, you you saying everything we gonna say before you even we even get to it. And like he seemed like so guilty. But see, that was in the he. He also he also wrote that in the paper too that he called it the dangerous game, didn't he? Yeah, because that's did. what he had in that letter. Yeah, he put he put it in the so, letter. Right, and so to me, like when I seen that scene, like it didn't seem like he was being cocky. It was just more so like, okay, I understand why y'all got me. You know, what I'm saying like, well, I understand why y'all got me here. Like y'all got me here because I think I'm the zodiac. But I just looked at it like he was so nervous, like he just was trying to, you know what I'm saying, like make sure he was straight through the whole time. Yeah, like I, I see that, but it's also like there there was like somewhat of a cock, and especially towards the end because they asked him to see his watch, and his watch was a Zodiac mm-hmm. watch. And, and it had that same symbol, yeah. It had that same symbol in it, and, he, and they asked him, he was like, because they asked him a question where it was a question that could have boxed him in. And he was like, mm-hmm. he didn't ask the question. He was like, I'm not the Zodiac killer. And even if I was, I wouldn't tell you. And it was kind of like, it, it gave the, and then also they looked at his shoes because there's so much evidence in this movie that mm-hmm. was factual evidence because like Arthur ended up wearing a 10 and a half shoes he was in the military and they found boot prints from one of the killings that was a ten and a half boot print that was from a military boot that you could only get with a military car and it was like it was for walking on the wings of planes yeah and this motherfucker got them boots and then after they interrog- interrogated him he ended up moving to another damn county right after so it's like there are so mm-hmm. many coincidences that went on with Arthur Lee Allen, and I could see how he was the prime suspect in this stuff. And then even his brother was on the side of like getting this dude locked up. His brother and his wife was like, they giving the police evidence of some handwriting and shit that he yeah. done. So it was just like mm-hmm. now I will say this for the people. Robert Graysmith is one of the writers of this movie. Robert Graysmith was obsessed with the Zodiac shit. So it's really from his point yeah. of view. That's what you got to understand. Right. Is that it's just using it, factual events. Yeah, it's using factual events from his point of view. So mm-hmm. the only two suspects that he felt that was probable was Rick Marshall, but then he kind of, you know, crossed him out. And Arthur Lee Allen was the guy, but this is the thing. This is the only thing that I will say about Arthur Lee Allen is the fact of mm-hmm. at the at very end of the movie, 1991, they met with um um Mike uh, Moreau or whatever his name was, and so they put a lineup in front of him, and he pointed pointed out Arthur Lee Allen was like, "This is the guy that shot me 22 years ago." When they go. Mm-hmm. Go get Arthur Lee Allen. This motherfucker has a heart attack before they go get him. So mm. they had an arrest warrant for him. But what ended up happening was they kept doing more investigation and they ended up ruling out Arthur Lee Allen because 
there was no DNA match and still there was no handwriting right. match. So it's just for these crimes of these people to never be solved and they are writing in to the police and taunting them. My thing is, let me ask you this. You are the editor of the San Francisco Chronicle, right? Okay. Thinking the way you think, mm-hmm. would you ever would have printed any of that stuff from the rip? Or would you would have done it in the beginning, but then you seen that, well, this dude is not stopping, so I'll stop. Like, would you, would you, if you the editor, the, the chief editor, would you even entertain any, yeah. any of that stuff? I, I probably wouldn't have published it. I definitely would have got it to the police. But the only reason I wouldn't have published it is because it created this, and you kind of you kind of touched on it earlier. Like it created this thing to where people started becoming copycats. Like if to me, I feel like them putting that in the paper kind of like um, it kind of like gave them a little bit of fame. Like you know, what I'm saying it made it one of those things. Like for, okay, so like the, the the closest thing I can remember was. Remember the DC sniper when we first got the reports about the DC sniper and then like that's all they talked about until the dudes got caught and then it was like you were scared to go to the gas station you know what I'm saying like you were scared to go outside you didn't know who the fuck it was where they was at all you knew is is that these motherfuckers were just hitting motherfuckers and then and they were saying that like dude was using the sniper and then somebody else said that it wasn't a sniper it was something else like we they had so many stories and so many theories about what was happening what was going on so it kind of created like this weird ass panic in the country and so i felt like when you know saying to to publish something like that it that's what kind of created it and then like you said like in the 70s like motherfuckers we they, it was motherfuckers that was killing motherfuckers like the most some of the most famous murderers and this is even funny we say famous murderers like some of the most famous murderers are from the 60s and 70s and shit so to me that was just giving a a, a green light for motherfuckers to you know what i'm saying kind of if they wanted to you know off a motherfucker like i don't know maybe your neighbor keep letting his dog shit in your yard okay well, I'm going to kill you and, you know what I'm saying, the Zodiac going to, you know what I'm saying, do his thing. And then now, you know what I'm saying, they don't even look at it like it was the neighbor. It was the goddamn Zodiac who, you know what I'm saying, came and killed this man. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying because it got to a point where, like, I remember like, there was one scene where this lady's going down the road and so this car kept blowing at her, blowing at her. She pulls over and the guy says, hey, your back tire is loose. Like, um, mm-hmm. I can help you out and tighten it up if you want me to. So she's like, oh, if, th- if there's no problem. So the dude go, you know what I'm saying, jump on the tire. Then he's like, all right, have a good day. She don't even get 100 yards. Fucking tire, get the rolling off that bitch. So he's loose to the damn tire. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Like, why? who the fuck just let a dude just like, Yo, my car driving smooth. There's no issues. Now you telling yeah, me what my tires are loose? Like, don't, yeah, you'd have felt that. Yeah, yeah you would have felt that shit. So tire fucking rolls off, and so because she sat there and waited for him to go, and he was waiting on her mm-hmm. to go, but he seen that she wasn't gonna go, so he just kind of pulled off real slow. Then the tire rolls off. Then he backs up and like, oh, I didn't know it was that bad. Do you need to ride to a filling station? And so then. She gets in the car. He realized she got a baby. And he was like, oh, I didn't know mm-hmm. you had a baby. And she was like, yeah, is that a problem? He was like, you know, more to marry her. So they get to rolling. And she passed. The, he passed the filler station. And she's like, hey, you just passed one. He's like, it wasn't open. And then he says, after I kill you, I'm going to throw your baby out the window. So she jumps out the car. And so there's a whole scene where she hiding the baby and all this type of shit. And she says that the Zodiac Caught on the side of the street. I don't think that was a Zodiac, yo. I don't think it was. That, that, was, that, that don't sound like it. Yeah, that was, was a regular, regular dude. Yeah, just waiting for a fucking woman, you know. And 
I, I think that he he either one his whole intention was either to rape the woman and kill her or just kill somebody. Mm-hmm. Like I don't think that had nothing to do mm-hmm. with the zodiac. Even the one that was, yeah. I think that the one at the river, the only difference with that one was that still wasn't his mo either. So they the dude and his girl is laying at the lake. And then the dude just come up with this fucking hood and this whole fucking suit with the zodiac sign in the middle of it. Yeah. And then he he rolls up on them with a gun and then um have the girl tie the dude up. Then he go ties the girl up and then he reties the dude up and then he just goes to stab he stabbed the dude in the back probably like five, six times, but then he went in on the girl. Now yep. That could have possibly been a Zodiac because that was his MO. He was focused more on the girl. The girl ended up dying, but the dude didn't. But that was just a weird situation where yeah, mid, you know, mid-day like, just go and kill these people that are late. So like And see, my, the my thing is, was the, the girls the girls he was killing kind of looked like the girl in the first murder. Yeah, kind of looked like Darlene. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing with Darlene though, what made that that one different? My thing is, I think Arthur Lee Allen probably was the one who killed Darlene. Now the rest of these killers, mm-hmm. I'm not sure it was him. But to go back to that last scene where they was putting everything together, um, Dave Toski and um Gray Smith, and he was saying yeah. that how you know, she worked at the International House of Pancakes and his mom stayed like five, well, he stayed like 50 feet door to door or whatnot. Mm-hmm. And so they, they was doing a timeline of where Arthur was when these letters was coming in. And then um, mm-hmm. there was one scene where he was saying that we didn't get a, uh, he said that Arthur had, he didn't send a letter well, he signed a letter with the the, t- the piece of the shirt, the bloody shirt or whatever. From the cab driver. From the cab driver. Now, they didn't get no yeah. more after they tossed uh, Arthur Lee out of his house because they tried to get a, a warrant. They couldn't. But then he moved to another county and then they was able to toss his house, which there was a lot of mysterious shit in his house. So mm-hmm. he was like, so... They, did, we didn't get no more pieces of the shirt because he had to dump the shirt because they got on to him. And then it was like, we didn't, uh, he said like four years go by, he was like, the stuff kind of died down. We didn't really get a letter from the Zodiac. And he was like, so then they get their first letter from the Zodiac in four years. And then he was like, yeah. And then we don't get another one for like two. And he was like, what happened to Arthur? Arthur was locked up. And then when Arthur got out, mm-hmm. he him a letter so it's like a, now you could look at this stuff as being coincidental but at the same time yeah. there's this this whole movie is there's so many coincidences throughout this whole movie and the Zodiac Killer like there's like you don't this is the thing this country has a bad reputation of locking innocent people up so yeah you don't want to put somebody in jail for, because my thing, you take emotion out of it. I I felt like from like I said, this is from Robert Gray Smith's point of view. His point of view, Arthur Lee Allen was supposed to be locked the fuck up. Like there were way too many yeah. coincidences. But at the same time, with especially when it's dealing with people like us, there's a lot of times where black people are getting locked up. For shit they did not do mm-hmm. because some shit, you know, matched up. So, but the way that this story and the way that this plot goes, like Arthur is like he seemed like the guy. But I understand the police doing their job. I do wish they would do their jobs for everybody the way they did when it came to know, right? Well, to me, you know, what I'm saying you, um, you also you pointed out another good point, man. At the time, there was no such thing as like DNA evidence. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't, there wasn't a way that, you know what I'm saying, they could match the, 
shirt to, you know, to anything or find his hair on anything. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they didn't have that kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like, they didn't have that kind of intricate investigation at the time. So I, I think that also made it harder. And then, like, for them to go out for little small things like handwriting and, you know what I'm saying, all that kind of stuff. Like, to me, it was kind of odd to see his watch and then see that same symbol from his watch to be used in the, you know, send the letters. And then like, like you said, they, you know, they pointed out that he was going to art classes. So obviously, you know what I'm saying? He knew how to draw or he knew how to paint or, you know what I'm saying? He was, he had some type of skill like that because he could, it seemed like he could copy that, that symbol. And it, you know, that to me, that was something that stuck out a little bit too. Yeah, and I think that, like, it was, <laughs> so the Zodiac had threatened, uh, oh, I mean, what's my man's name? He had threatened um, Paul Avery, and Paul Avery's like, yo, I want a gun. Yeah. So, and then they, <laughs> he was in the gun range, and they were <laughs> trying to sell these pins that says, I'm uh, I'm not Paul Avery, and um, I thought that shit was funny. But also, it's also funny to mm-hmm. see because this came out 2007. So I think we were at least one Iron Man in, right? Or two. Um, hold on, wait a minute. Let me check that real quick. Okay, check because that. Because we might not be Iron Man. We might be the Hulk. So um, they said, that, you know, I am not Paul Avery. They had that whole little thing going on. And I bring that up to say that yeah, Paul, Iron Man came out 2008. Also, it was the year so this after. Is the Hulk. Okay. Yeah, this okay. okay. So when when um, Robert Downey Jr. is playing this, he's actually filming as Iron Man at the time, but he made a cameo at the end of the Hulk movie. So same same year, he he actually did play Iron Man. Got you. Got you. And so Paul Avery had got a tip. And so while he go to um, check out this uh, this tip, Grace Smith going on a date with this girl. And mm-hmm. and it's so crazy because I, do, I am surprised she stayed. Because like they first date was it really was like a disaster. Like they ain't even really, yeah. they ain't even really had yeah. a first date. It was just like they went to this restaurant. He was late, and then he asked her for a quarter to make a phone call. He called Paul Avery's wife, and then he tells her the whole situation. And she was like, "Don't that sound like a a, a setup?" She was like, the, the, "The Zodiac could be setting him up to get there." And then he's like, "Oh, I really need to get home, to, you know, to get this phone call." And she was like, is this a way for you to get me to your house? And she's like, he's like, no. He was like, he's not even thinking about getting there. He's just like, I need to get home to see yeah, him. He ain't worried about her at this time. He's like, bitch, the Zodiac is making some happen. Yeah. And so then <laughs> she's stupid. <laughs> he said, bitch, the Zodiac got some <laughs> But it is. I ain't worried so, about you and this goddamn pasta bitch. I'm trying to get to the Zodiac. And so then she's like, I get the food to go. And so then, like, he goes to his house, and then Paul calls him. He's like, you're not going to believe this. And then he ended up discovering a murder that could have been the Zodiac's first murder and all this type stuff. Like, Ooh. there's, like, there's so much stuff going on. But see, but what ended up happening, this is also a story of obsession. And yeah. because Paul Avery ended up getting so obsessed with, with the Zodiac, he ended up drinking himself out of a job to where he wasn't mm-hmm. a credible reporter anymore to a point where he mm-hmm. had to move on into a boat and he lost all his files because Grace Smith went to go see him when somebody when his girlfriend told him, like, yo, you should write a book. And she he was like, mm-hmm. well, Paul Avery is the one that got, like, all the files and stuff, and he went to go see him, and, like, he fucking flips out on him. Like, my thing is, like, you can't blame this dude because you got obsessed yeah. with getting the fucking Zodiac just as much as he did. But his life didn't yeah. fall apart like yours. And so, like, Grace Smith, he was so obsessed with catching the Zodiac killer. And then 
Dave Toski, he ended up getting obsessed about catching them as well. But like I remember listening to the, the Zodiac um uh podcast and they was talking about the real Dave Toski and they was like, yo, like he was enjoying this press that he was getting. Like he was like they said that like he basically became like this hot shot when he basically didn't didn't yeah. even really do nothing. Like <laughs> at the end of the day he didn't yeah. do nothing. But um he just so happened to have a case. Yeah, he just so happened to have a case, him and his partner Armstrong, but Armstrong was just like, yo, like I gotta get out of this shit. He ended up leaving. And um yep. well, he just said he didn't want to be on call anymore. And so he ended up mm-hmm. leaving. But like to show like now, Gray Smith life ended up not getting destroyed. Now Paul Avery did, but Gray Smith ended up yeah. making a huge damn come up. This dude was a, a cartoonist. At the damn San Francisco Chronicle. Yeah. Because he, he was the one that drew the sketch, right? Yeah, he would draw the sketches in the newspaper. Yeah. And, like, didn't he, didn't he move, uh, what, I want to say he moved to the, um, he ended up working for, like, another uh, newspaper outlet. I'm not sure. It don't, it don't show that in the film because he ended up getting fired. From the San Francisco Chronicle, while That's he, what it was. he got in the fired. process of writing the book, That's what it was. he got fired. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and he ended up writing the book, and um, it's it's the the Zodiac. The crazy thing with him is the fact of still to this day, it's still an open investigation, but then at the same time. Mm-hmm. We don't even know how many people he actually really killed. Now, usually right. when it comes to serial killers, we at least have a rough estimate of how many people. But the thing with the Zodiac mm-hmm. is it got to a point where they even show it in the film that people was going in the police stations and saying, like, yo, I'm the Zodiac. Like, it yep. got to a point where people would just and say see, that's, they are. Okay. And that's, why, that's why I said that when they when they printed that that letter in the, in the paper, man, it was so dangerous because it it became more so of a it became more so of like a, a in in a sense like a reality show than it did an investigation because it's like now, like you said, people coming into the thing like no, I'm the Zodiac killer, no, I'm the Zodiac killer, no, I'm the Zodiac, all because they wanted to to claim that you know what I'm saying that fame. Yeah, and that, and that's and that's when it really it really got crazy. And then people start coming in there, you know. <laughs> this one dude, said, <laughs> this one dude said that um, he said somebody he think it was a dude that he worked with. He said, "Man, he had yeah. a, a foot accident at work," and then he said, "All of a sudden, this murder happens." He was like, "Man, come on, put two and two together." He's basically saying because the dude <laughs> got crushed at work, he just turned into the damn Zodiac killer. Like, man, what the fuck is you and talking about? Way. And like that was really because of a lot of the the press. Like the press, it ended up getting so out of control. Like, dude, they even made a movie, and they showed them watch a movie that is about the Zodiac yeah. when they ain't even know who the damn Zodiac killer was. And it's like I, I forgot what they named that movie in this film. But they end up making a movie that was similar to what the, you know the same stuff that the Zodiac does, and it's like yeah, that's why I say it, it really got dangerous. Now, did it did it help them when it came to so the government got all these intelligent fields and all these smart people that went to Harvard and Yale and all this stuff, and nobody could figure out the cipher, but a damn history teacher and her husband figure out the damn cipher. But nobody in the police, mm-hmm. nobody in the government was able to figure out the cipher, but the damn teacher and her husband figured it out. Sitting at sitting at home chilling, just looking at it. And see that's the and that's what I was saying. Like that's why, you know what I'm saying? Like that 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 might have been like maybe a, one of the good things to come out of it is that people, you know what I'm saying, like that was, you know, looking to help and trying to do something but to me man it was it was more so it was a lot more cons than it was pros when they were making this like headline news and 
And I know you're supposed to, I mean, I know that's their job to, you know what I'm saying, like make that news, but it was like, in a weird way, they was like kind of, I don't want to, I'm not, I don't know if the word is glorifying. Maybe, maybe I'm trying to, maybe I'm thinking of idolizing, but it was like, they were just, they were just kind of putting him on a weird pedestal, like making it as if they weren't necessarily worried more so about the murders. It was more so like, you know, who is the Zodiac killer? Is the Zodiac killer near you? It's like, you know how you watch the news and it's like the the one person there come on and they'll be like, um, I don't know, uh, I'm trying to think, computer hackers. Uh, are they getting into your MySpace? Are they getting into your Facebook more tonight? Uh, you know what I'm saying? At five or whatever. It, to me, it was like that. It's like they created this fear. And then at the same time, they created like this, this illusion of like fame around the, Z- the Zodiac Killer to where like the weirdos was jumping out like, oh yeah, I, I think I can make my come up like this. You know what I mean? Yeah, and also like like you said, you said it perfectly, like pros and cons. Because also, I don't know if they would have been able to get some stuff if it wasn't for Paul Avery and Robert Graysmith. Like there's some things that yeah. it seemed like the cops wouldn't have been able to come up with if it wasn't for the two people. I mean, I can't even call Robert Graysmith press. I mean, this dude was a cartoonist, and he just switched his whole life up to figure out who the damn Zodiac mm-hmm. was. And mm-hmm. it, it it got it gotten so crazy with like you said the press and them like they put it on a fucking TV show and it ended up being a dude from the mental yep. facility you know, calling in and yeah like stuff like that like that's why like why do stuff like that yeah and then they said oh we're gonna set up a private meeting so you're gonna say okay we're gonna set up a private meeting and then you say the location on the damn TV show. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, man? It's stupid, man. Stupid shit. Like, stupid stupid shit, man. as hell. And just like my man got out of the car and said, y'all sure know how to hold a, a private meeting. Like, you in on the shit, too. Like, y'all knew y'all was mm-hmm. live. Why are y'all going to air some shit when you're supposed to be having a private meeting? Exactly. So it was just, like, some of the shit, like, like that, like that didn't make sense. And like, like I say, a lot of this shit is actual police files. Like Robert Graysmith had mm-hmm. police files of this shit. So a lot of this shit is factual. Now, yeah, like I, I keep saying this because I want people to know it is geared towards Robert Gay- Graysmith's point of view. But as far as the right. fact, the facts are true. They're actually police mm-hmm. files that he has access to where he came over the story he just geared it towards what he felt because I remember watching the documentary on it and like dude they only talked about like Arthur Lee Allen for like 15 minutes and they moved on they was like yeah, they made it seem like he wasn't even really like a prime suspect like it was crazy how they just mm-hmm. brushed over the fact of him but this movie is centered around um, yeah. Arthur Lee Allen so I just want to let the people know, like, if you ended up, you know, going down that wormhole of looking at things from the Zodiac Killer, you know, you're going to get different points of views from different people. But uh-huh. my interpretation of what I saw in this film, and even because, like, the coincidences, man, just him wearing a ten and a half, him being having a military background, like, uh-huh. that was a part when he met with um, when Gray Smith met with um with Toski and and said that he went to these libraries, he's like, you can find these books at these military libraries and all of them were stolen. So like mm-hmm. that gave you, you know, two checkoffs as far as this got to be somebody that was previous previously in the military. And like Arthur Lee right. was in the military. Maybe he did slip up on the phone and tell that one lady, uh, I have to kill because it's my birthday. And then his birthday ended up being uh, December the 18th. And then um, all these coincidences, him getting questioned at work, and then he's moving to another county. Um, Yeah. Him knowing Darlene because there was a phone call to the police, there was a phone call to Darlene's house, and there was a phone call 
to uh, like Darlene's mother or some shit like that. So like what that said mm-hmm. that we had to know that he knew Darlene and then the friend that said that he used to come to her painting parties, she said there was a guy there named Lee. So all of these coincidences, man, of this film, like, like for me, when, like when I watch this, what makes it great to me is the factual information. Like they put in the years, the the county, where it is, like mm-hmm. all this stuff. Like while you're watching it, like there's a little subtitle that's going to pop up and tell you what year this was, and it showed you how every day. Well, not every day, every year Toski would go to Washington and Cherry and sit there when the cab driver got shot because that, that killing did not make sense. Like that one stood out. That's what made, and then even, even that part. So let's zero in on that part for a second. So okay, one thing I love about that, that one scene was how they pulled the camera like up high and they follow in the cab, you know, and they got um, this radio station playing where people are talking about, you know, about the Zodiac and how they feel about it and right. stuff like that. I just thought mm-hmm. that that part was very genius how they pulled the camera up top and, you know, filmed the, um, the cab from the, um, from the top. So then they put the cab driver pull up, put it in part, and then he shoots the dude in the neck. So then he leans up, um, cuts his shirt up, takes it with him, and then walks off. And so then they go to talk to the kids because the kids saw it from their window. And then there were these two ground cops who actually walked right past my man. But it went over the intercom. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's be real. It's the 70s. Suspect got to be a black guy. It go over the radio. (laughs) A damn black guy shot a cab driver. So then mm-hmm. this dude that actually killed the, killed the damn cab driver walks right past two foot cops. And, but they didn't look at him, pay him any attention because he was a white guy and they went over the thing saying that it was a black guy. So then they went in and right. talked. So he wasn't even a suspect. Exactly. So they ended up talking to them. He was like, yeah, there was this one guy that was, you know, he was kind of lingering like he was, you know, seemed kind of out of place. And they was like, well, why didn't you stop me? He was like, well, at the time, over the radio, they said the suspect was a black guy. So then they told him to get with the sketch artist. And they're trying to look at him with a fucking, you know what I'm saying, with a mean mug. Y'all were the one Mm -hmm. who put over the intercom that was the fucking black guy. So I was, how are you going to be mad at these two cops? They were like, oh, well, he would have been covered in blood. He wouldn't have been covered in blood. Like the dude, ne- he probably had some blood splatter, but like that, like. Well, remember that because they said that they said that he shot him, but he didn't shoot him, did he? He stabbed him or something like that. No, he did shoot him. He did shoot him. He shot him in the neck. Oh, he did shoot him. Yes. Okay. Well, so it might have been you no know, blood splatter. Yeah, and, and like I said, it also depends on how. Because the blood splatter probably would have went forward, so and that time he would have been covered in blood. But like, there's like there's so many different things to where it makes me think that there was multiple killers. But as far as Darlene and Mike, and also the person that killed. Let me see, because that happened in 69. So there was a killing in 68. Because that first letter that they focused in on, he says that he gives them the information of what kind of ammo that was used. He said how the girl was sitting. She was facing this way. The dude was facing this way. And he said, I also killed that kid last summer. And also remember... Mm -hmm. The girl that Grace Smith went and saw in prison said that Darlene was scared of him because he said that he killed someone. So my thing is, yeah. I think the only thing that we can prove on Arthur Lee Allen is that the Darlene and Mike, well, Mike didn't die, but the attempted murder of Mike 
the killing of Darlene and the person that was killed the year before. Yeah. So, but all this other shit, the cab driver and the, the shit at the lake and all that type of shit, mm-hmm. I don't know, man. I, I think those were copycats because when you listen to the uh, the Zodiac Killer um, podcast, there was a, a Zodiac situation that happened in New York City. Yeah, see, I was just about to bring that up because I remember um, I remember that they were saying that it happened on the East Coast as well because it was one in New York and it was another one. I forgot where it was, but it was a couple of them um, on the East Coast. And I remember somebody saying something. It was some documentary I was watching, but they were talking about another saying like, we knew that the one in New York City was a copycat because there was no way that everything was going on in California and happening here. And then at the same time, somebody in New York City ends up dying. Meanwhile, everything is still going on in California. So they, you know what I'm saying? They kind of knew that it was being copycatted. But I mean, it's, Man, to me, I think that, like I said, when I when I watched it, because I didn't, I don't know too much about the Zodiac, but I knew enough to when I, you know, what I'm saying, seen the movie, I knew enough to know, you know, what I'm saying what was kind of going on. But to me, it was like, it was just odd, especially like that interrogation scene. To me, it always stuck out because it was like he he just didn't seem like. Or maybe it just he just didn't convince me enough that he was actually out here murdering people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just wasn't convinced that he was the guy that was out here catching bodies. Especially when, like, they were, you know what I'm saying? Especially, like, the scene where he had the two people tied up. And it was like, okay, to me, I look at it like this. If If he was out here killing couples, right, wouldn't he be more mad at the dude? Or wouldn't he, yeah, wouldn't he be more mad at, well, not necessarily mad, but wouldn't he really kill the dude and then, like, harm her so she can kind of, like, live with that? Like, or, well, not live with it, but, like, I I don't know, it's just, like, just, just knowing that it was people, it was dudes who survived and none of the women survived, but it was dudes that survived. Like, don't you think, like, he would make sure to off them because they messing with the woman he in love with? Or in the, in his mind, like, that's what he's looking at? Uh, the reason I would take the, the opposite approach is because yeah. one thing we never seen Arthur Lee Allen with was, was girlfriend. Right. right, so but, it but seemed remember, like he, he could be he like a girl. Though. He did, but remember, he ended up getting fired from uh, from a school for touching kids. He was known as a pedophile. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. then, also look at how he was living in that trailer, dude. Fucking squirrels running around all over the place and all this type of shit. So I think that he couldn't get a girlfriend. See, I don't. I don't think he was even living there. So, okay. So what is your theory on that? I think that, I, I think that at one point in time he was, but because this is, and then now this is if he's the killer. Well, at one point in time he was living there, but after he started actually going to kill people, then it was like, hey, I can't, in his head, he probably like, I can't go back home. Because if I go back home, they're going to know. You know what I'm saying? Or they have somewhere to find me. Because he was living with his mom, wasn't he? No, 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 no. Okay, right. So, Arthur, when when they tried, when they, when they interrogated him at work, mm-hmm. he ended up moving to another county. Right. They didn't know where he moved to. But he they ended up talking to yeah. his brother and his sister-in-law, and she ended up telling them where yeah. he stays. And then they went to another judge, and this judge gave them a warrant. So I think that he was living mm-hmm. there under the impression of they don't know where I stay because I moved. 
Mm. And mm. and it took them a year to get that warrant. A whole year went by. Yeah. So he goes a year in the clear. So he probably got more comfortable at this point because he's like, oh, well, they interviewed me a year ago and nothing happened, so I'm good. So I think that yeah. it was where he stayed, but he had got comfortable because a year went by and nothing happened. Well, actually, more than a year. Just mm-hmm. a year went by after they talked to him at his at his job. So I think that yeah. he was saying that. And then just the guns that they found matched the same shit that he um that forensics had the bullets that he had man mm-hmm. just the way that he had the dark black coat which anybody can have a dark black coat but he had two of them and anybody right. can have two of them but to have the same exact guns that matched the same thing and it was some other stuff that they ended up finding in that house and that's when they was able to get his handwriting but have you ever heard that shit where they say when it comes to people that are like serial killers and stuff like that, that they emotion are not necessarily like different personalities, but like that some people can feel a different type of mood and they, when they write, their handwriting could be different. Have you ever heard that theory? I heard that before. I can't remember where I heard it from. But they were no, saying that a person could be that's true. That's true. Cause I, I it's not I don't I don't know if it's to the point that with the the condition that you're saying, but like I have different styles of handwriting. So like depending on how like depending on how fast I write or depending on how big I write. Is that better? So, yeah. Okay. Now I was saying, like, depending on how fast I write, and then depending on how big I write, my hand, my um, my handwriting is totally different. Yeah, like, yeah, I, I feel the same way. Cause sometimes when I'm rushing and trying to get through stuff. You know, it looks different, but I was speaking more of a, a psychological type of thing. They said that some people, because okay. I bring that up, I bring that up because after they tossed his house, they brought him in and had him write with both hands. And Sherwood said that it mm-hmm. didn't match. But this is my problem with Sherwood. Sherwood was so stuck up on his old ways because he's been doing that job for 30 years. Because they said that. He said that there's no, in my 30 years of doing this, nobody's that ambidextrous. Like, dude, people can evolve. Yeah. Like, you can't stay stuck in your way just because you've been doing it for 30 years that you're too good to think that somebody mm-hmm. can be that good ambidextrous. So I really think that Sherwood was one of the people who, I'm not going to say messed up the investigation, but what came out later was that Sherwood ended up being an alcoholic. So I wonder that that alcohol interfered with his work because they ended up talking to another dude that was a handwriting expert. And he kind of mm-hmm. felt like, you know what I'm saying? Like it, that could be possible. But he was like, I don't want to yeah. step on, on on Sherwood. So he was just like, just get another sample. But my thing was, if they could have been able to find a way to say that this dude was incompetent by, you know, drinking too much, that could affect his work. Mm-hmm. Can we get another? Now, I'm not a lawyer because a lawyer could say, even if you did brought in another handwriting expert, that lawyer could say, well, look, the first dude that was on this case, he ruled him out. So why are we even taking mm-hmm. the word of somebody else? So that's where it could kind of get tricky. But I think that Sherwood really kind of halted this investigation as far as the handwriting. Because like like you said, there was no DNA back then. And this whole right. case right. was really off of <clears throat> evidence that was 
you know, coincidental, but also like the only evidence they had to work on was handwriting. And Sherwood mm -hmm. was the expert, but Sherwood also was a drinker. So I don't know, man. It's it's kind of it's kind of fishy. Well, you 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 really brought up an interesting point when you said that um, based on their move, their handwriting might change. So that got me to thinking like, well, when he kills, maybe he has like an excitement out of that. And so they probably could have tried to find a way to make him or get him excited and then have him write that. Or like find something that he really, really was in. This is the only problem. Have him write about that. Yeah. But this is the only problem though. Mm -hmm. This was this was the seventies. So this is when to bring back an old episode we done. My hunters. Mm -hmm. Remember they yeah. was that was around the time right. they was doing right, that right, right. stuff. That it was just starting. Yeah. That, that was, was just, just starting. starting. Yep. So now if they started that stuff a little earlier, because I think that that's something that that, that team that put that, that, that they had together in um in my hunters, they could have been able to yeah. uh what's my man Holden? Holden probably could have, you know, pulled oh, Holden, Holden would have solved that shit. Oh yeah, because Holden would have been like, yo, he probably writes different, you know, during this time. Mm -hmm. So I can rile him up and then get him yep. to write something. Because I think that Arthur went remember, in. That's what he that's what he did with old boy with the shoe. Yeah, exa exactly. Exactly. So I think that he yeah. would have they could have got something out of him. There was just different tactics at that time. I mean, the 70s, right. there wasn't no such thing as a serial killer. And and then, like, I don't even think the world even knew how to handle that type of stuff. Obviously, it shows you in the film, there's people going in there, make, you know, calling their co-workers the Zodiac killer and then also saying that they was the Zodiac killer. And that's why I asked mm -hmm. you a question earlier in the podcast if you was an editor, would you would have put that in the paper? Because it seemed like what ended up happening, they got more false information than they actually got yep. proof, really. Yep. Because so it, that's why it, made it, it, like a, it made it like a spotlight thing. Exactly. And they ended up re really wasting a lot of time and a lot of years off of false information mm -hmm. from people coming it up just saying shit and you have to take everything that you hear because you don't have any leads right right but the but the only That's thing was, but 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 you know what though now that i think about it they still could have been able to work with paul avery and robert still could because the thing is the zodiac was going to write letters i think that mm -hmm. Either way, even if they wouldn't have printed him, I think that he would have kept writing because the whole thing with him was he wanted the attention to show that, hey, I'm smarter than y'all. Like, that's all he right. did. He made the he made the police department look bad by doing this all this time, and they never catch him. So, like, that was his Ooh. whole thing was to make them look bad. And I think that he would have wrote those letters to the San Francisco Chronicle. And even if they wouldn't have printed them, Paul Avery and, and, and Grace Smith still could have seen it in those little editor meetings that they was doing and all this type of stuff. And they still probably could have done a lot of the things that they was doing because it just got completely insane. It got out of control. But as far as the film, like, I love the way that it was shot. The mm -hmm. the, the the, the costumes was off the chain. Like it really looked like the seventies in California, the way they was able to do it. Um, I felt yeah. that dude, I seen something. I, I don't even know if, if I believe it because the number is so insane. Mm -hmm. 
I just got to find it. But, but to me, man, this, this film, it was because my thing is like, like I said at the beginning, like I am a huge person of true based on a true story type of film that are, that are time pieces and, and actual stuff that you could look yeah. up. Like this stuff is right down my alley. Um, Oh man, I wish I could find that one thing because dude, I seen something. I don't even know if this stuff is factual, but but this is actually a um, a great place to look at things uh, as far as um, IMDb. But like, it was it was something. When I find it, I'll tell you. But, but this this film, man, is is and then like like I said, like Mark really kind of took off after this man to be honest with you yeah because so did a- after this after this so he, he went Jr. on the run so what yeah um so, so did robert downey jr so did uh jake gyllenhaal um who else was in this um it was another name in here too hold on That uh, Chloe girl, uh, I, I I can't say her last name, but she played in the uh, Boys Don't Cry. Um, she ended up being a, a a pretty a pretty good um pretty good actress. But yo, I I have no reason oh, to not. Um, what is what is dude's name? Is that no? That's not him. Hold on, my fault. Go ahead. But dude, I don't know if this is real, but this thing says, okay, let me say this first. So the opening weekend in the USA, this movie made 13 million, right? Uh, it grossed in it grossed in the United States at 33 million. But accumulated worldwide gross is eighty four million. You know what the estimated mm-hmm. budget was for this movie? Sixty five million dollars. Damn. Who in the fuck has sixty five million dollars to put into a movie? Hey, like man, when I it's seen it, the, it's the it's the it's the subject matter of the movie too. You gotta remember that, like. Once again, like a lot of these, a lot of these serial killer movies, man, especially based on actual factual events, like them motherfuckers get get the green light. But the um, real quick, the guy I was uh, trying to say was Brian Cox. Brian Cox is uh, he he took off as well. He might not have took off in the same um, at the same trajectory, but he did pretty good. He was in Super Troopers. He was the um, he was the captain in Super Troopers. He was in the Born Identity, the Born Supremacy. He was in X Men Two. He played um, uh, uh, Sky Sub. What the fuck is that dude's name? Is he, he the dude that turned in? in, in huh? Was he in Dodgeball? Was that him or was that somebody else? No, I'm thinking somebody. the Rip Torn. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was Rip Torn. That he played uh the dude in the wheelchair. But um, okay, he was uh he was the one dude in Troy that lost his uh, that lost his wife that originally was with Helen the Troy. Oh, okay. Um Arma Agamemnon it was Agamemnon? I think he was Agamemnon. But yeah, he he's been in some. He's been in a couple roles. My favorite role that he was in uh, uh, was um, uh, 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 the Ringer with um, what is that dude's name, man? Uh, from Jackass. Uh, Johnny Knoxville. Johnny. Um, yeah, he was with Johnny Knoxville in the Ringer. 
he was his uncle. That was a, that was a good one. But Brian Cox has been in some great movies too. Yeah, like this this was, yeah. I mean, dude, you you hit it you hit it right on the head, man. Like a lot, of, like well, really, three people like, I mean, blasted through the ceiling. You know, after mm-hmm. after this film. But I mean, this is the thing, though. I mean, Jake Gyllenhaal was a, was a child actor. I mean, like a lot of people love him from that that what is it, Donnie um, Darko? Was that what his name of, of that movie? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He Donnie was Darko. like fifteen or some shit. And so, yeah, like, he's been, he like, been doing it for a while. You gotta remember, he he had this. He was in um, wasn't he in Brokeback Mountain? Yeah, and Brokeback Mountain, I think, came out after after this. Yep, it definitely um, did. He was in the uh, he was in the Brothers movie. Yeah, Brokeback Mountain. No, 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 no. Brokeback Mountain came out two thousand five. So it was before this. Yeah, it came out two thousand five. This came out two thousand seven. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, he was in the he yeah. was in the movie. And Brothers, like, dude, I think I'm it was the dude. Him and... Go ahead. Yeah, brothers. Brothers came out in 2009. Yeah. But dude, don't so, forget I mean, about Jarhead. Jarhead came out. Interesting movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. Damn, I did forget about Jarhead. Jarhead came out in 2005, though, so it was actually before the Zodiac. But, but he he was he was on the road though. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he was on the road. And then the thing about Broback Mountain, like, look, I'm the dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people will would get. I remember I had told somebody I had seen Moonlight. It was like, oh man, you mm-hmm. watching that gay shit? I'm like, yo, I'm watching cinema. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't. And the thing about Broback Mountain, yo, was. The story, like, get besides all the kissing and all that stuff, the story was mad mm-hmm. crazy, yo. Like, it was, it was like really wild, like getting into the lives of like two dudes that are gay, but they are pretending to be to the world straight, married with kids and all this type of stuff. And they would just go yeah. to this place where they would just, you know what I'm saying, get together. But like, the crazy part was like towards the end. When um when Heath Ledger in the way that he died, it was crazy, yo. It was like they they had ended up dragging this dude from like his dick or some shit like that. Like it was crazy the way that he had ended up dying, and it was just like Hold on, what? Like, dude, yeah, like I, I can't remember if they was pulling him from his dick, but they was pulling him from a horse, and like they ended up torturing him and killing him. All because he was gay, because they figured out that he was gay, and like these, a couple of dudes just like went out and like killed him, and like that's what they had did to him or whatever. Like, so, dude, it was- hold on, time out, time out. So, <laughs> so to show to to hate on a, a gay dude for doing gay stuff, you do something gay, dude. It is. I've never understood like, because, my whole because I'm just like just just think about that like in order like so if if they did if they did drag him by his dick right you would have yeah. to touch his dick to put the to put the rope, rope around it, it. Yeah. Right? yeah I mean I, I mean I know they cowboys but I'm like they not you not that good where you you can lasso a dick yeah like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying like I'm, you gotta I'm, you gotta I'm, touch I'm, his dick. <laughs> So like yeah, I always, <laughs> I always felt like that, people. That, that I'm sorry, like... man. That that just baffles the fuck out of me. Like, okay, he's gay. Why why does that bother you so much? I never understood it. I never understood it because my thing is, if if you feel that strongly about it, and obviously there's some issues going on within your own head. Because yeah. for for it to for it to bother you like that much to where you would torture and kill a person, 
all because this person is gay. Like there's some sexuality issues that you have within yourself. Even the people that Man, used to make fun of the movie, like not look, not even I'm not like, even taking it that far. Not even taking it to the point that we're like you killing and torturing a motherfucker. Just the fact that you don't like a motherfucker. Like you don't even know this person. You just know that he likes or he likes men or she likes women, and you just instantly like, oh no, nah, that uh, 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 uh. like you don't know they may be gay and celibate. You don't know what that person does. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't just I, I don't know, man. People people are so weird to me, man. Like you can that the fact that you can find out a person is gay and then just be like, oh, I don't like them. This might be the, the most fun motherfucker in the world. This motherfucker might be the most charitable motherfucker in the world. This may this may be the the greatest person to be. Who knows? He might be the best person to go out and get drunk with. Nobody knows. But you, I, I don't know, man. I just, I, 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 that, that irks me. That irks me. Just the fact that people can care so much about the, some shit that really don't even matter about another motherfucker that much and, and dislike them for that. Like, that's, that, I, I don't like that. I, I can't get, I can't get with that. I'm the, I'm the same way, dude. I'm the same way. Just, but yeah, me, I mean, I watched that shit, man. It ended up having a good story. Like... Yeah. Yeah. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. But like, yeah, he had, he had a run, dude. Like he did brothers. Um, you know what I'm saying? Love and mm-hmm. other drugs is a is a is a is a, a low-key, really good movie. He did that shit with uh what's my girl name? Anne Hathaway. Like that shit ended up being yeah, really Anne good. Anne Hathaway is a great actress. Yes, uh and the watch. That shit was good. I didn't like him in End the Watch, but that was good. Prisoners was good. Enemies. Enemy was a uh, was a crazy ass movie. Like I think it was a low budget movie. Enemy I don't think it hit right. the movies. Enemy was was a pretty yeah, good yeah, movie. Right. Like Nightcrawler was Nightcrawler was crazy. Nightcrawler was good. When yeah, when it, was good, but it was good. Cool. Uh, in two thousand twelve, was that him? No, he was in um one of my favorite movies. Uh uh, damn it. Dude, I cannot believe. Uh, no, not, it was um the 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 um the end of the. Oh my God! What is it? It was the end of the day world after tomorrow, wasn't it? Uh, the day yeah, the day after tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good tomorrow. one too. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one. Um, but yeah, yeah. man, he he went on a run, man. He went on a a, a crazy run. But um. But then, if you if you really look at um, Mark Ruffalo, though, like where he ended up going around the time of this film, or even after this film, I think that his best work probably came after two thousand and seven. I mean, of course he he hit the jack. Of course he hit the jackpot with um. With the Avengers shit, but like, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sitting here looking at the things before. I mean, it's 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 not really. I mean, he was, I don't in, even he was in Now You See Me One and Two. Um, he was in uh, dude, Shutter Island. Dude, listen, he ended up doing a uh, a Reservation Road the same year Zodiac came out. That is a Great mm-hmm. movie, dude. That is a great movie if you never seen, seen it. That. But he was in, dude. It was crazy. He um he ended up hitting this dude's son. It, it, it was Joaquin Phoenix was in it, and um he okay. ended up hitting he ended up hitting Joaquin Phoenix kid with his car, and like he was trying to hide his car, and um he was basically trying to get away with it. Hitting this kid with his car, and it was hey, a whole little thing. And Joaquin the, Phoenix was so is that, the, is that the same movie Joaquin Phoenix did after? Didn't his brother die like that? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know much about Joaquin Phoenix. Hold on, 
I want to so say, I'm I think that's sure. the movie he did keep, after his brother died. But like you said, uh, he did Shutter Island in 2010, Date Night in 2010, mm-hmm. and that's when Avengers started. Avengers started in 2012, and then obviously, you know, he did um, like, dude, it got crazy after that, dude. He did Iron Man 3, Now You See Me, and then two years later, he does Fox Catcher, which is a great movie. Fox Catcher is a great movie. Then you get back into the Avengers. Then you get Spotlight. Now you see me too. Then he was in Team Thor. Um, and then his last three or four movies, he was uh, Bruce Banner. And then he does Dark Water. Me and Uncle Washington did a whole podcast on Dark Water. Mm-hmm. That was a really, really good movie. But, um, but yeah, man, like, this movie really really stunned a lot of people off, man, because I, I think that this was like the first like big, big movie that Mark Ruffalo did. And it really it really took his career off, man. But like, man, I'm gonna get into okay, it. Okay, like, never man, mind. That, his, I his know, brother died in ninety three. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, I didn't even know that about his brother. But um Yeah, he was like the um uh, TV, well, I don't say TV star, but he was an actor too, though. Oh, okay. I had, I had no idea. No idea. Learn something new every day. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I ain't going to get too far into it, man, like, you know, because we didn't break the movie down. We just kind of went into, like, a lot of our theories and stuff like that. So I said everything mm-hmm. that I really had to say. Um, great cast. I said I said this before on the on the last podcast. Stay tuned in because this movie could possibly be in my top five movies of all time. That list that we gonna have coming up in a couple of episodes. Mm-hmm. So obviously, man, I'm giving it a fire, fire flame. I, I there's not much. There's not like they pretty much gave me everything that I needed. Um, they didn't really leave anything unturned because at the end of the movie. That's when they did like the little typewriter shit saying that, you know, they gave you what happened to everyone and it gave like when the Mike dude met with the one cop in 91 and said, this is the man that shot me 22 years ago. It it didn't Mm -hmm. play it out. It just typed it up like they went to go get Arthur Lee out and they got a a rest warrant for him. Dude died of a heart attack. Um, they told you that how Arthur Lee Allen ended up getting um, cleared because they, they was able to get DNA evidence and none of the DNA matched. They told you what mm-hmm. happened to uh, Toski. They told you what happened to Paul Avery. They told you what happened to Robert Gray Smith. Like, so they, they didn't leave any stone unturned. So that was the great mm-hmm. thing about it. So I give it a five. They gave me everything that I needed in this film. And I, I I just honestly think it's one of the one of the best films that I've seen. Man, um, for me, man, I think that the movie had a great cast. Um, it was it was a, a consistent flow through the movie. It wasn't it wasn't a lot of down points in the movie, which is a real real good thing because especially with movies like these. They'll try to add in a lot of filler in between certain points, like especially like they'll, you know, based anything based off of historical factor, anything based off of true events. They'll they'll have the true events in the movie, or they'll have, you know, what I'm saying like the closest thing to the true event in the movie. But in between is like a whole bunch of filler and stuff that really don't, you know, what I'm saying like don't match up or like they they make up to make the story better. But you can tell, like, they didn't really do a lot of that in this movie. Um, everything seemed like it was legit. Everything seemed like it was fact-based. It wasn't anything, like, that was super exaggerated, you know what I'm saying, to make it seem like, you know what I'm saying, over the top or anything like that. Um, I agree with you when you say that it was shot very well. It wasn't any bad acting in the movie. 
And you know what I'm saying? Like, I think it is one of the one of the best movies to to come out, especially about historical events. Um, I'm gonna agree with you, man. I'm gonna go five for five. You you was breaking up there, man. I wanted the people to hear what the fire flame was. Where I leave off at the fire flame. Am I back? All right, there we go. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I was I was basically just saying that um, the cast was good. Um, they they made sure that a lot of the facts were in the movie. It wasn't a lot of filler in between. You know what I'm saying? The 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 reenactments of the um of the you know anything that happened, any of the historical accounts. Um, I agree with you when it was shot well. And I think, you know what I'm saying, like you said, this is one of the best movies to come out that's based off a of historical fact. I think that it was, you know what I'm saying, uh, especially to the point. And not only that, like you said, it was based on somebody's point of view. So it made it a little bit easier to kind of roll with the punches. So I'm going to go five for five as well. Oh, that's what's up. I didn't know where you were going to go there, man. Yeah. I don't know why I thought you was going to say like yeah. a three and a half or some shit. <laughs> like I was <laughs> waiting on like a and a half. Now, I, I, I mean, I, I really, I really like this movie. Like I told you, man, I picked this movie up in the store because I thought it had something to do with like, I thought it was like a horror movie that was based on, you know what I'm saying, like zodiac signs, like niggas is gonna die in their birth month or whatever like that. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't, I didn't know it was based off the zodiac killer. I just seen this, I just seen zodiac on this shit and then like, I bought it in the, uh, I bought it at a dollar a dollar general. It was on sale at Dollar General. So when I bought it, like it didn't even have a case. It just came in like a box, a package box, and it just had the DVD in there. So I was like, well shit, let me see what this is. And shit, I got to watching it. I was like, oh shit. So yeah, this is this is a fire ass movie, man. Damn, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. But man, we got it, we gotta give it to him, yo. Like this this next one, man. A film oh, that, oh man, near and dear to my heart, man. Like is it is it is so <laughs> how how many how many and this is another one of those movies where I I said something on that that last twenty eight minutes or less podcast where I was like I'm like a B side type of guy, you know what I'm saying? Where mm-hmm. where. I like a lot of the songs on the album and don't really rock with a single like that. That's just like Drake's debut album, Thank Me Later. I never listen to Over. Like, I don't know why that was yeah. his first single, but Over was like his first single and it was like, that was supposed to be in the song and it was like, dude, I don't even like that song. I like all the other joints on his album, yeah. but I never rock with Over. Like, I say that to say this, like, this movie... Like I, I didn't look at the, you know, the budget and all of that type stuff. But like, this movie was so good, and there was so much, like all the actors and actresses in this movie was good. And dude, I'm, a, I'm gonna let you do because like I can't even. I'm so quick to like say what it is <laughs> because like, dude, this yeah, movie. You trying to okay, it away. this way. <laughs> I, 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 I've I've spoken on it before mm-hmm. for one certain reason, it, but ah, I love this movie, man. I love this movie. Everything yeah, about this man, movie. I, for me, for me, I think that the movie is dope because in a way it's like a time period piece, but it's not necessarily um, like a, a biopic or nothing like that, but just the fact that it's set in a certain time um, is giving you a certain view of America, even though I don't think that's what it, it, it even intended to do. You know what I'm saying? But it it kind of gives you that. 
And then not only that, man, like this is another one where the cast is is fucking fire. Dude, the cast is insane. Like in yes. yo. And the the the, yeah. the other thing that's great about this movie is the soundtrack. The soundtrack. Oh too. man, listen, you beat me to it. I might say the soundtrack is nuts. The soundtrack you, is so that fucking music, crazy. The soundtrack is crazy. Yeah. Dude, and like you said, this movie has this movie has every almost everything I want in the film. Like it it, it gives you action. It gives you it, yep. it I say this, it has war in it. It gives you the blood, really? the the that it gives you it gives you the seventies. It gives you that music. It get, like it gives you so much stuff, and it's just like mm-hmm. there's nothing much more you can ask from a movie mm-hmm. that this movie did not give you. Like, yeah, man. I'm not even I'm yeah, not even man. hyping it up to the to the like I'm like at a loss for words trying to describe this movie without saying what it is. I'm not even doing this justice. Mm-hmm. So like. Y'all just give us a couple of days and it's coming. Like yeah. it's coming to you. Yeah. Like this movie, man, is 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 so good that I don't I don't understand why it didn't do like like I said, this is just one of those movies like, oh, like it don't it don't it, it's 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 not like that movie that was you know what I'm saying, that that was Give it's it a, to you. It's definitely a hood classic. That that it is. It it is a hood classic. It's a hood classic through and through. But, but this is what makes it different, though. Like, it's not even really. It's giving you bits and pieces of the hood, but it's a. I oh no no no! It's I had all did. of the hood. But this is the thing, though. It's giving you the effects of something else. He just happened to live in the hood. No, no, you see no. What I'm saying? Listen, he is from well, the well, hood. Well, this is something no, we're listen. discussing. He is from the hood. Yeah, but, but, but he from the hood. And being from the hood, this is giving you uh, an account of somebody that's from there that's going through what somebody from the hood would go through during that time. Okay. I see what you're saying. No, I, okay, right. So you know I'll say this. Yeah, so it's I give this is this is gonna be very good. I give the people this. I give the people this. They got a ten million dollar budget. All right. Mm-hmm. Open the week they made hmm, might well say eight because it's seven point nine. So they pretty much made eight million first week. The gross, the so American gross was twenty four million. Mm-hmm. Well, well, when it look at the the well, the actually the the accumulated worldwide gross is the same as the United States, which is twenty four million. So well, no, I mean that fourteen first million dollar I mean profit. First week, that first week they lost money. But yeah. the thing is, that's what that's what I say, like. This movie didn't make a lot, but the impact of it mm-hmm. is so powerful that it overruns, it, it overrules that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like when this you put is, it on This a, is one of those movies, like this is one of those movies, like if it comes on, you are definitely gonna stop and watch it. Yeah, because it's it's undeniable. Like it it is like that good. Mm-hmm. And it also let let it, it also let you win on how I say this. It also let you win on how fucked up the American government is. Yeah, big time, it's, it's, big time. Yes. So that's that's on a, on, a, on, on a bunch of different aspects. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I I'm really I'm really looking forward to doing this. This was one of those ones where, you know, what I'm saying I, I hit you like, yo, I'm sorry, man, but like. I, I just and I, I, was, I, I was I was I'm listen. I was glad I was glad that we doing this because remember I told you man I was I was chilling that night and it, it popped up and I was like okay then yeah let me go ahead and you know take take this out 
But yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? Y'all make sure y'all go listen, you know what I'm saying, to this next episode, man. You will not be disappointed. Um, we gonna we're gonna get into some stuff on that episode for real, for real. Especially, you know what I'm saying, uh, knowing a couple of things that we know and being able to talk about a little bit that we can. So I, I think this is gonna be one of our best, man. So um you guys stay tuned, you know what I'm saying, keep listening. Uh, you know what I'm saying, and, and thank you guys for listening in the first place. But um, you guys can check me out at Scoots Bronson on Twitter. You can check me out at Scoots Bronson underscore TV on Instagram, Scoots Bronson TV on YouTube. Um, you can check me out, 15 Minutes of Fame and Isolated Society. Uh, if you want to listen to Isolated Society live, you can go to Spreaker.com slash Isolated Society uh, every Thursday, 9 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, I think that's what, yeah, it's Eastern Standard Time, you know what I'm saying? You can listen, you can chat. Um, I got. I think I got my setup, so you guys will be able to call in now, you know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, we're going we to make sure this one goes smooth, and I'm going to try to get some callers on this episode or, or on this stream uh, that I got coming up this week. I got some interesting stuff to talk about. It's all sports um, and everything in the sports world, everything around, uh, revolving around sports. So, um you know what I'm saying? Tune in, man, and check it out. And thank you guys for listening. And please, man, make sure you share this podcast with somebody else. Everybody loves movies, and everybody should be listening to this podcast, man. Yes, sir, man. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, um, I, I dropped the episode on 28 Minutes or Less. So all major platforms, man, it's on the movie O. Um, in parentheses, Othello, so go check that out. Um, the Stolen Time Podcast. Um, I already talked to Uncle Washington. You know, he's good to go for this week. So he's going to be back for another episode. So be on the lookout for a 20, no, be on the lookout for a Stolen Time Podcast. Um, go to the Stolen Time Podcast page on Facebook, Stolen Time Pod on Instagram, s.foster8 on Instagram and Twitter. All of the links to everything is going to be there. I appreciate everybody's support. I appreciate the uh, the uh, the rating and reviews that I have on the 28 Minutes or Less. Um, so keep supporting the boy, man. That's all I can say. I appreciate all the support. I appreciate everybody listening and tuning in. Um, also, I, you might have said it, but I'm, I really just want more people to go to it, man. The VA Podcast Watch Group page. Please yes, go. Sir. You know, ask to be invited to the group, like the group, all that good stuff, man. Yes, sir. Um, man, and you know what I'm saying? With that said, man, like they say in Hollywood, it's a wrap. Cut. <laughs>